Hi everyone, I am Nutrix the Sim Guy and today we're going to talk about the Novation Peak. Novation Peak is an 8 voice polyphonic synthesizer. It's a piece of gear that is solidly built. It's all metal, it's very heavy um, and it's made to be played with. It's a fun piece. Most of the values you want to control are right there on the display, on the hardware. You can turn and use them and you'll see that it's really, really, really simple to get your head around it. If you know anything about Novation and their Nova uh, synthesis, you'll see that most of it is stuff that we know from the Novation, like super, Supernova and Ultranova. The main difference though here is that you have an analog VCA and an analog filter and an analog distortion. The rest is digital, but there's an analog part there that is really powerful because it sounds the way we want for analog circuitry. There's, there's the warmth of analog, there's the versatility of digital, and the synthesis that you have here opens up from classic analog sounding to virtual analog to wavetable. So pretty cool synth. Let's dive in. I'll show you how to use it. So we're going to talk about the Novation Peak and let's go through the tour of what this synth is all about. Well, first of all, let's go through a different section. You've got the, you know, the, the entire screen section here, they call Menu. So this is where you can actually go in and access the extra features depending on the places you want to go in, like oscillator, envelope, LFO, RPG and clocking, modulation, voicing, um, effects and settings, you know, general stuff. And I'll talk about this in a, in a bit, but this is, you know, when you get into more in-depth values if you want. Now, if you go and you follow the signal flow, you've got oscillator one, oscillator two, oscillator three. The three oscillators are exactly the same. You have the range value here for the pitch. You have the coarse tuning. And every time you turn a knob on screen, you see the value, the current value here is changing and under it, you've got the save value. So it's showing you the last time it was saved, what is the value? If you want to go back to that value, you go back to, and you have the values. And then it goes back to the last window you were in. You've got fine tuning and scent. You have the waveform, sine wave, triangular wave, sawtooth, square wave, and more. That's a pretty cool thing. So we'll talk about this thing after, in, in a moment. You've got modulation envelope, two. So by default, you have the amp envelope, which is always for the amplitude. You have the modulation envelope number one, modulation envelope number two, but they're called one and two because they could be assigned to something else. But by default, if you go back here, you see that it's envelope number two. So if you want to use an envelope for the pitch, by default, the two is used to send to the oscillator. So it's going to be for the pitch. So envelope number two would be by default assigned to be the envelope for the pitch control. You all, and the envelope number one would be, if you look where it is, you have it here for the filter. So envelope number one would be the filter envelope and envelope number two would be the pitch envelope. So, but this can be changed in the mod matrix later on if you want to. What else you have here? So you have modulation envelope two and LFO two depth. So the two type of modulation by default can come in, mod envelope or LFO. So envelope number two or LFO number two can be used for pitch and LFO number two is here. LFO number one is here. Again, if you go look into the filter section, you'll see that you can have LFO one depth here. So you could have LFO controlling the filter. The last thing you have here is the shape amount, is you can actually change the shape of these oscillators, which is something not normal for anything else than the square wave, but in this case you can. Um, let's listen to one. Let's go initialize here. You have initialize patch. Very simple sound. And we're going to just change. We have the sine wave, and if you change the shape, the sine wave can change the harmonic content of the sine wave, so which is not normal at all. You don't have that normally. You have it here because this is a digital oscillator, what they call a numerically controlled oscillator, which basically means it's a it's a physical model of an analog synth, with very high speed oversampling, 
and Novation is, is saying that this is so much higher. It's I think it's 24 million oversampling, which is a lot, lot, lot more than what you usually have, which should be around like 512 oversampling. Um, these are all numbers, but it, what it means is it should sound a lot more natural than other digital synthesizers. It sounds really nice when you move the, the shape. Same thing you have with the triangular waveform. This sounds more like a FM modification, but it's pretty cool also. You have the sawtooth. I can control something that sounds like pulse width modulation. And again, this can be controlled by an envelope or an LFO. So if you use the LFO for this, you have that movement all the time. You want it slower? Okay, that's pretty cool. Then you've got the square wave, and then with this you can control the pulse width modulation. So these are not a selection of OR. It's not manual OR mod envelope or LFO one. It's all of them. When you move from one to the other, you're just changing the, the destination of that knob. When you move to the other one, it stays in memory. So you have three destination. All of them can be controlled at the same time. So pretty cool, pretty powerful. So bring that down to zero, go back to manual, change this. You put it here, you get to LFO, you want LFO, you go back to mod envelope. That's it, so the mod envelope happens once, and you got the LFO now moving. So if I don't want it, and I need to change this, it goes back to this one, and put it to zero, go back to this one, and then changes. So, and there are three of them are exactly the same. Now the last part here, the more section here is, we'll open that more waveform here. Little thing about how you maneuver through the, the menus. You've got menus you see here, you have three on eight. So it's menu page number three on eight pages. If you play with the page select here, actually go from page one to page eight. Well, it's very simple in the fact that page one is common information. So uh, diverge and drift are, if you want that sound to be more um, analog and drift away from the original pitch, or if you want the four or three of them to go away one from the other, you can play with that to sound like real analog synthesizer. It's, I, I find this interesting and at the same time funny because one of the reason you would buy a synth like this one is because it doesn't drift it's super stable because it's a digital synthesizer. But still, people would say, well, it's not analog enough, it doesn't drift. Well, for me, drifting um, is not always a good thing. You know, most of the time with drift, it's, it's too much, you hear it. In this case, you might want to have some drifting. You would go drift here, but not too much because you would like to have it sound still musically playable. If you go away of, of you know, ex exceeding the you'll fear that your note just goes to the wrong place at one point. So in my case, I'm not using this at all. You got the key sync, uh, you put it off or on. Uh, key sync is for um, uh, all the effects like the LFO, you could actually have the LFO sync to when you press the key, the LFO is re-triggering every time. In this case, I'm not gonna use it. I like the LFO to be free running. Every three of them are the same because from page three and, and, and actually three and four, are for oscillator one, five and six, oscillator two, and seven and eight is for oscillator three. So it's, you've got, all of them are just the same value coming back, but the different oscillators. So you have, the first one is wave more. So these are different wave. And then what you have here are not physical model anymore. These are wave tables. So these are selected list of slices of time, if you want, recorded, and you can still, move, I'm going to get rid of that one and go manual mode. You can move within the slices of the organ cycle that they have. So these are kind of a very short sample if you want. Um, it's, it's a list of our harmonic content. In this case, it comes from an organ. 
You cannot add your own, just to be sure. These are stuff that the company decided in and put in the list of wave tables you can play with. A fixed note here would be if you want one of these to stay the same key all the time, even if you play the keyboard, this will not change. It's interesting because you could use one of these oscillators as a modulator, as an LFO or something like that. And then you might bring the volume down. You don't want to hear that uh, LFO. And then you might want to have the LFO to be on a fixed value. So you could have a LFO 1, 2, and 3. It would be possible to have that. So that's it, it opens up the option of using one of the oscillators as something else than a fixed, uh, that, that a, a played note. Of course, if you do something like a drone sound and you want it to play all the time to the same key, well, fixed note is always something else that you can use. Band range is for the pitch band on your keyboard. When you move to the next page, you have V-Sync, Saw Density, and Density Detune. So these are pretty fun. If you know the JP8000, for example, it was a synth by Roland, came out in the late 90s. It's not the first virtual analog synthesizer, but it was a big hit uh, for rave music and electronic music in the 90s. And one of the things that it came up with is the notion of having a sawtooth that multiply itself many times. So you, when you, it mimics something you would do, let's say on a Prophet 5, and you put it in unison mode, and the five oscillator would be kind of out of tune and you would have that sound of a very dense, very rich sound. If I go here into, I'm gonna go into sawtooth mode here. When you're in sawtooth and you go density, what you hear, it's kind of a mixed value. You're bringing up the volume of two other sawtooth. So you hear three of them and you go down here you're detuning each of them. Oops, sorry. So you've got that rich sound, very wide sound. If you bring that back to zero, one oscillator, that's it. Okay. What do we have here moving around? That's it, this is not moving anymore. So that sawtooth density here is really cool because what you have is the capacity of having a very dense sound, very wide sound, having multiple oscillators, only with using one. So this one can be playing three oscillators, this one three and this one three. So you've got a big synth playing nine oscillators, all the tune, it gives you a very powerful pad. So. For pad sound, very lush sound, this is really cool. What else? You have the V-Sync. V-Sync is usually if you use sync value, that one will be synced to the first one and it will have a different sound. In this case, V-Sync, you have a virtual oscillator syncing of the oscillator you're playing with. So each of the oscillators can have a V-Sync, a virtual syncing oscillator source modifying it that you don't hear. Actually, I'm gonna go here. So if you want to have that sync sound that some synthesizer really have, like the Prophet 5 you, was a big hit with sync sounds, um, you will use this. But then you'll have to use some type of mod in the modulation matrix to go and modify this in real time by one of the envelopes so it sounds like, like a Prophet 5 if you want. So pretty cool. And each of the other oscillators also have exactly the same capacity. So three identical oscillator, pretty nice, pretty efficient. Now you get into the second part here, the mixer, you've got oscillator one, you got the volume two, you got the volume three, you've got the volume, you got the noise volume here. And go back to the window we had earlier here, there's something about the low pass filter for the noise. So if you bring the noise up, you can actually go back here and make it clear or muffled depending on how you want to open and close its filter. So there's none here, but you have some control over here. So turn it on, down. You have a uh, ring modulation between one and two. So let's say I'm gonna change that.
So ring modulation can do a lot of these metallic sound uh, and you have the amount of ring modulation. Again, this could be controlled in the modulation matrix. You can say there's an envelope controlling that value here, but it only controls the ring between one and two. Well, for me, there's something missing here. I'm really surprised that the peak does not have external input. I, for me, it's, it's just, it was something that I saw in the base station too, I saw in the uh, mono station. I was expecting this here. It's not that I need it because I have it in another synthesizer, but I'm surprised that this model does not have external in. It's just uh, uh, Novation has been putting that into most of their, you know, synth for a couple of years. Why is it not in the peak? So I'm just, it's just curious about that because that's the flagship right now. Um, I was expecting to see that by de facto, you know. Then you get the VCA gain, so you can actually bring... You can control volume here of the output of the mixer, and this goes into the filter. The filter you have, if you look at the value of the filter, it goes really at the bottom here. You've got the frequency for the open up and closing, and I always like Novation. They have big knobs, there are bigger knobs just for the filter cutoff point because they know that's one of the things you want to grab when you play you want to move that around and this is the movement is very smooth and nice in it so now we said that the oscillator was digital the filter is not the VCA is voltage so this is analog the filter is analog and the distortion is analog everything is digital but that part here is the analog part that really makes it sound warm because of that you have, so you've got the cutoff point here, and you have the resonance. And you have a distortion overdrive. Distortion overdrive comes, the overdrive comes before getting into the filter, so it just adds up more complexity to the sound. You have a low pass, bend pass, high pass, which you expect to have. And you have the control over 12 dB per octave slope or 24 dB per octave slope, which is, again, what you expect to have from this type of, of value of a synth. It really is smooth. You don't hear any steps or ladder or sound or zipper noise. There's no zipper noise or ladder or whatever. It's just very smooth sounding filter. And again, in the filter section, you have where the control are coming from. So if you want the filter to react, the cutoff point to react, LFO depth, that, that's where you put some LFO. If you want it to be controlled by the oscillator 3, that's pretty cool. Oscillator 3 here becomes an LFO. If you want a key tracking, if you want the keys on the keyboard to control where the cutoff point is, that's where you do it. Envelope depth, envelope depth is envelope number one. And it, or amplitude envelope. You can use one of the two here. You've got resonance and you've got overdrive. So Everything is there. That's a pretty cool thing. In some synthesizers, you will go into the LFO, and that's where we're going to say where I'm going to send it. In this case, no. And the LFO is just, you control the value of the LFO. If you want to talk about the destination of the LFO, you basically go into the filter and select where you want to bring the information from. And if it's not enough, you go into the mod section, the mod menu. That you're going to get a lot more features over there. You get the distortion. <laughs> Really nasty. I like it. It's just just a very again. If you want it to be soft, you don't need it. You have all of this. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, you've got distortion, you've got chorus. Oh, these are the effects you can have at the end. The chorus, the rate of the chorus. There's three types of chorus. But again, if you want more control over the chorus, they're in effects here. Go into effects just to show you. You've got eight different windows for effects. And in these windows, you've got the global information, wet and dry. Do you want it to be in parallel or in series? You actually go here and you say, no, I want it to be delay goes into chorus and reverb, or I want the 
chorus for reverb goes in delay and chorus, you can change the order in which one goes into the other one. In this case, in parallel, we go into three of them in parallel. That's pretty interesting. Well, actually, it's the most uh, efficient one, I believe. The other one are good also, but it depends on what you want to do. Uh, and then you get the window for the chorus depth and chorus feedback. So in this case, of course, you only have the rate and level here. So if you want more control, it's here. Chorus low pass and high pass. These are low pass and high pass uh, filters. Delay, again, if you go into delay, you've got the value for the volume of delay. You can sync it, you get the time, you get the feedback. You can change the time value. But if you go here, you've got damping. So it's kind of an EQ for the low and the high frequencies. You have the ratio, the slew rate, the width, how wide you want that stereo sound to be. So all the information you don't have here, you have in the window. Reverb, again, you've got just the time here, and you have the level, and you've got three types of reverb. If you go back here, then you have the choice pre-delay, and low pass and high pass damping, the room size, modulation depth, modulation rate, and high pass and low pass. So you can really tweak the sound of each of these effects, really powerful and they're really clean and they sound good. They're basically what you would get out of a box outside of your synthesizer. So pretty cool to have it in it and you can actually save it when, with the sound. And there's a bypass. So if you have too much effects and you find it like, you actually bypass right away. And it would be a way to actually, actually use that in a song if you want. In my case, I would. Um, okay, bring that down for now. And you have the envelope, like we said, ADSR, ADSR, LFO, you have different shapes that, you know, normal stuff you expect for all of these devices. Fade time, how much time it will take before the LFO really kicks in. And well, actually not kick in, but gradually kick in because if it would be to wait before you start, it would be a delay. In this case, it's a fade, so it's gonna be gradually coming in. Let's say I'm gonna put that on the pitch here. Okay. If I put the fade. So you could, when it's sustain, it starts to play. That's a little bit too much, but you get the idea, you know? Whereas if I, if I put it here at zero, it's always running, always playing. So it's the fade time before it starts. And then you've got low and high. So the speed, very fast. It's in the high frequencies, like it would be an oscillator. So this becomes almost FM synthesis when you get to these values. And you've got sync. So then it's sync to, and you've got the value here. When you move it, you see on the screen, you've got values, musical values for the tempo of the machine. Just go back to high frequency here. If you bring that to... This is a FEM synthesis. So you can really get into a FEM synthesis just using the LFO2 as a modulation for the oscillator. You have the gliding on or off, you get the key latch uh, for the arpeggiator and you get the gate. It, turn on the arpeggiator and then you have the gate, how long each note is going to play. And turn the key latch on, it's a hold feature. If you let, your, let go of the keys, I don't have to play anymore. Or, So this is only when I press the key that you have. We got three keys played. I'm gonna go through the three, three keys. Now, if you want to change your arpeggiator, you go into ARP, and you actually ARP, and you go into the second window. You've got the type, up, down, the key latch, up and down, up, down, two. There's a different version. 
and the way you played them. And then if you go in the middle, you get rhythm. There's like a 33 version of the rhythm. Okay. And the octave is how many octaves in play? See? Five octaves. Okay. Let's stop this for now. Um, and then you basically have everything we saw on screen. You go into this menu here. That's where you get the rest of the information. You've got oscillator. We saw that. Envelope. Most of it is here. The only thing you would want to have here is do you want the envelope to be responsive to velocity? So as you press harder on the keys, you would have the envelope to have a wider movement, softer, softer movement. So if your synthesizer is in monophonic mode, do you want the re-triggering of the envelope to be legato or do you want it to be, it's here, to be re-triggering? So every time you press a different key, you want to re-trig or it's only going to retrig if you let go all of the keys and it's going to be in legato mode. You go to the next page, you've got the same thing for envelope one and same thing for envelope two. So you've got the three pages, three envelope. That's it. LFO, we talked about LFO. Here is the window. You've got six pages. So you've got three for LFO one and three for LFO two. You have um, you want the phase to be free or you want to control the phase where it is. So it's really um, how you want it to sound. So it's, again, it's not something we see often in a synthesizer. It's possible because the LFO is digital in this case. Monophonic, and if you put it in mono mode, uh, you want the trigger for the LFO to be re-triggered or not. The slew of the LFO one. The fade mode, now it's in fade in. You can actually change it to fade out. So it start and then leaves out, or gate in, you wait and then it, it pops in like a delay, or gate out, it's there and then it stops, and that's it. That's a four different options. The fade sync, you want it to be synced or not, because you, it can be synced to tempo or not. And you have also repeat. You want it to be repeat. That's a pretty cool function. As you can say, LFO one is going to repeat, I don't know, 28 times and it stop. It's, it's weird, but it's, it's really powerful. Um, it's something we don't see often in, in hardware synthesizer, but you can say this one is going to be repeating 28 times and then it's going to stop playing. And the common here, you can put it on off or on. I don't even know what the common is. I'll have to look in the manual. And then you have the same thing here. Uh, we saw the RPG and the clock. Well, the clock is clock rate for the speed, 120 BPM. Source is at auto. So it means that if you're going to get something from the MIDI cable, it will sync, sync to it. You can actually force it to be internal. So even if it receives stuff, it won't follow. Or it can follow, say it's going to be external, automatic. Or it's going to be MIDI only or USB, so depending on what you want. You were running at 120 BPM, we switched to uh, USB, and then it's in the fly mode, it's waiting until you, it syncs. If it receives MIDI via USB, you'll see that value here, sync, it will be locked, okay? Uh, modulation, the modulation matrix is probably the, one of the coolest and the most powerful part in this synthesizer. You have, if you look at slot number one here, you have 16 different slots, each of them contain the, a source and a destination of modulation. So you can use almost anything here. If you go into destination here, we're in slot number one. Destination, you've got zero, one, two, three pitch. So these are the pitch control of zero, one, two, three. I guess that the zero should be the noise because one, two, three are here. And if you move them, you've got oscillator one pitch, oscillator two pitch, oscillator three pitch. Uh, sort of one V-Sync, so you can control the V-Sync value we saw earlier in the window for uh, these thing here. Uh, uh, sort of two V-Sync and all the other ones here, okay? There is like a huge amount of options in this thing. It's just noise is going to the filter and it's just really powerful, the amount of destination. These are the destination only, okay? So 
you go then into depth is how much you're going to send to that destination. It's the amount of effect you're going to send here. Let's go to the next window. Next window, we've got direct. These are the source of modulation. So in this one for the slot is the destination. The source here could be direct, could be modulation wheel, after touch, um, external pedal. There's two pedals at the back, which is the expression pedal and the breath controller, but it could be anything. Uh, velocity from the keyboard, the keyboard notes, LFO one plus, so over the value. Plus and minus, so it goes around the value, up and down. Two, two up and down, amplitude envelope, modulation envelope, modulation envelope. Two, animate these, animate one and two, these two things here. And the CV, there's a CV in at the back. You can use a CV in as a modulation. So these are the sources. So you can say, I'm gonna use envelope one and I'm gonna also use LFO two. So these two sources could be sent to that same destination. That's pretty powerful. And that is for slot number one. And then you go slot number two, and then you keep doing that. It's just gonna be a massive 16 slots of modulation source, two sources, and one destination each. It's really powerful. So this is pretty fun. This is pretty, uh, for synthesis um, freak, it's really powerful there is still a couple of things to talk about one is the animate here that you see the animate is kind of a weird thing when you press on it there's nothing happening you have to go into the matrix and in the matrix you have to say the source and say the source will be animate one let's say depth i'm going to get some value and destination is going to be the pitch so if i press something now See the value so it's kind of weird and I'm sure there's some more complex way to do it so I will dig more into the animate I'm sure we can use it in a much more powerful manner than what I'm doing right now and I'll do another video soon about just the animate because I'm sure there's something more powerful I can do with that so I'll figure it out and I'll come back with that later on Next thing is the settings. Settings is just basic stuff that you need to know for the global device. Go to first page. First page will be protection of memory. Let's say you bring it on live tour and you don't want to erase as you play around with it. So you could put protection on so you can't erase, you can't, the save button does not work at that point. You have pickup. Pickup is when you move a knob and you don't want it to jump right away to the value of the knob. You only want, when you cross the value of the knob, it will pick up on it and follow the knob. So if your knob memory is at, let's say zero here, and then you move it to the middle value, well, it's only when it's gonna cross the value that was in memory that it will actually pick up on the movement. If not, it will jump to the value as soon as you touch the knob. So it's just a different way to react depending on what you want. You have the brightness of the screen here. You have system. Every time you move a knob, the time it takes before it comes back to this window, you get the uh, version. You've got to calibrate. You can actually ask the machine to calibrate itself. And then you wait, it will calibrate. Okay, <laughs> a little bit longer than I thought, but uh, hey. How long is that calibration? I don't know. That is a long function. Then you get into uh, scent information, global stuff about the velocity. There's different shapes of reaction of velocity, so you want it to be very reactive or not. Okay. Tune scent, the global peak, you can tune it and scent. We can transpose in semitone. You have MIDI control, the channel is going to receive and, and send. The local, is it on or off? Local meaning the internal RPG -er. Do you want it to control the internal sound or do you want to control only? the output, the MIDI out, because the local arpeggiator can be sent to MIDI. So this can be sent to output. In this case right now, this one control, controls the internal sound and controls whatever's patched into the output 
here. So if you put it here and turn it off, it's only going to control the internal sound. The other way around, if you turn this one off, it's not going to control the local. So the internal sound is only going to control outside. So my default is like this. Then you have the MIDI enable receive and transmit. So receive and transmit of uh, control changes and the known registered parameter numbers. So basically numbers here. When you move these, do you want to send, transmit them, and you want to receive them? So you could, the logic is if you have this and you record in your sequencer, any movement of the knobs could be recorded as a sequence of event, um, as, you know, with the notes if you want. So all of these knobs can send, and if you put in receive, it can also receive all of them. Patch uh, and bank. So meaning if you change the bank and you change the memory, it's going to also send it or receive so you could have another device sending the information in so this one would change the memory as you play so this is mostly used for live um, if you want to change the sound uh, between sets between songs next one you want to automatically sense the pedal switch so because pedals can be on by default and off when you press or the other way around so you patch your pedal at the back Turn the machine on. If it's an auto, it will sense the circuit. Is it on by default or off by default? And we'll switch to that. If not, you can actually decide which one is it close or open by default. And the pedal mode. Do you want when you press on the pedal, do you want to trigger animate one and animate two? Or do you want to trigger sustain? Or do you want to trigger that? Okay. And the last one is the backup. How do you want to back up the memory? So if you use here you decide you want to send it through the USB or the MIDI out USB or MIDI so basically it's a MIDI system exclusive backup it's a backup of all the values in the machine and then what you're actually backing up is here current is the patch as you see here that's when you're gonna send and you go go now it's dumping the memory it's done um, bank A the entire bank A bank B the entire memory of the bank B C same thing D, same thing, and then A, B, C, and D, all the memories backed up. The settings, so the values you just have in this window, we just, in all the windows here, can be saved. And A, B, C, so the, the entire memory of the banks plus the sets. That's it, that's the entire memory. And then you press go, and it's gonna send everything over MIDI or USB. It would mean that in the other end, you would have your favorite. DAW recording this. So you would open a track, MIDI track, put in record and verify that you're not filtering any signal because this is going to be system exclusive messages. I'll think I'd do a, I will do a system exclusive video just to explain what this is for and why you would need that today. But this is one of the best way to back this memory. Um, and you could have the entire memory backed up in the same song that you use. So the memory that of the sound you use in a song could be saved on one track as the peak memory. So that's how you would do it. Uh, so this is for the setting window. One of the most important window we haven't talked about and really need to know what it is. It's the voice menu. You go into a voice menu and because it's a polyphonic scent, the voices is really important because You'll have to decide how it's going to play the eight voices. Is it in unison? So you go here. When it's in unison mode, how many sound do you want to hear? Do you want to trigger eight sounds? Every key is triggering eight. I'm going to go initialize and put at eight. Every time I press a key, I'm hearing eight different sound. I'm actually hearing eight times this totally. Put it back to one. But, I, but if, if I put it at one, I can actually play chords, but I can also say three. So every time I press a key, I'm, I'm triggering three notes, uh, three times the patch. So this, this, three times. Just give you a massive sound. You can decide if they're going to be detuned and spread. So I go detune well, you understand that. And spread here. We'll give you that stereo image. That's pretty cool, pretty fun. 
Next one, pre-glide. You want it to pre-glide before you press the key. Put the glide on. And then you have the mode that is a polyphonic mode. Let's go back here. I'm going to bring that down here. Glide is useful when you're in mono mode. You know, in poly mode now, you have also the choice of poly 2. Poly 2, poly 1, mono 2, mono LG. Mono. Mono LG, Mono 2. So that's it, guys. This is my tour of the Novation Peak. There's still some stuff I want to dig more into and give another video on. I want to dig a little bit more on the part about the animate buttons. I'm sure there's something I can do that is cooler than just pressing on it and having just like the effect I was able to create. So I'm sure I'm going to come back with something else about the animate button. And the one thing I didn't test out yet is the CVN. So there's a CV input at the back and you can use for modulation. So I'll do another video just on that, but then I'll use another synth as a CV generator. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks and it's going to be just an extra stuff on the peak and probably I'm going to test out the Novation Mono Station which has a CV out so there's going to be a good match for the two of them. That's it guys. If you like what I'm doing, thumb up, share it with your friends, post it where you want and uh, if you have any comments, put them in the comments. You can follow me on my YouTube and all the other online places I can be. You can see in my description, you'll see all the other links you can follow me. And that's it. See you next time. Cheers.